Welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Vaughn. On today's show, we recorded live right after the first round of the NBA draft. We talked about Ben Caro going one to the Magic, Chet going to OKC, Jabari going to the Rockets. We go through all the picks, what we like, what we didn't like, uh, gives a little bit of draft grades. We also talk about the Hornets trading the 13th pick for basically nothing. Uh, it makes no sense what they're doing down in Charlotte. We also get into uh, how why the NBA draft needs to improve and how these trades are just out of control. I messed up on like 10, 15 players where they're actually going on the podcast. I didn't know until this morning where half of these dudes were going. The trades are out of control. They need to just get it set up. Let us know what the exact details are. Give the guy the right hat, whatever. We get into that into the podcast. Also, you might hear me sniffling and coughing a little bit during the show, um, going through a little of a cold. So Jordan flew game out here. Thoughts and prayers going out to me. Hope you guys enjoy the show. But before we get into today's show, we are brought to you by Pod Talk. Pod Talk is the best way to listen to podcasts. It has the best interface compared to every other podcast listening app out there. I use Pod Talk myself. Go download it right now in the App Store. Go join group discussions on your favorite podcast like this one. Go subscribe and talk about the CarterCast in the CarterCast group discussion on Pod Talk right now. Download Pod Talk in the App Store today. And now here's the show. All right, we're live. We're recording right now. It is currently the Thunder on the clock at the 30th pick. We're recording at almost 11 Eastern time. We're not going to wait till after the second round to record. Hopefully nothing crazy happens in the second round. Uh, this is one of the weirdest drafts I remember. Like, it was so hyped up at the same time. It, like, kind of lived up to the hype, but also, like, maybe just being a Hornets fan, we're just disappointed. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just, I, I'm just blinded. Yeah, it – Draft wise and like picks moving around, it's about on pace for normal on par. I personally expected more deals involving current players, bigger names, not necessarily Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant, nothing like that, but maybe a Miles Turner to the Hornets, you know, maybe a Russell Westbrook move, like something along those lines. And no big trades. I feel like the biggest name to be traded tonight was Danny Green. Danny Green for D'Anthony Melton. That's been the biggest name trade for current players, in my opinion, during this draft. That's yeah. it. Like, that's it. Yeah. And so that's been like, a little anticlimactic. The, the Jeremy Grant thing happened yesterday. Yep. I I don't know yeah, what's so, going on. So during the actual draft, it's just been a little anticlimactic for me, at least, because I saw all these reports of, oh, trades are going to be ramping up tomorrow. Like, everybody better be locked in. Like, who knows what's going to happen? I will say, though, as, as compared to past years, the draft order leading up to the draft this year was more uncertain than ever. Because in the last few years, it's been locked in, maybe even a day before more. This is one, two, three, and that it's always been accurate. And this year, like we're going to talk about in a minute here, it seemed like Paulo was surprised to go number one, and it seemed like Jabari Smith was a little shocked to go number three and kind of pissed off. Yeah, uh, it was like 2 a.m. last night. I, th- I texted everyone. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's happening? P- Paolo's all of a sudden like minus 150 on the books. Now it's up to minus 300 to go one, like – what is yeah. going on right now? So with that line movement you thought, and then in the morning when everyone woke up, it just flipped to like Jabari minus 3,500. Yeah. And then just flipped back like right before the draft started, it was minus 200. So all uh, day, all day, Woj was tweeting Jabari Smith number one, Jabari Smith number one. Yeah. Um, Denver is focused on UCLA's. I'm t- okay. Before we get into the actual draft, I'm tired of the whole Woj and Sham spoiling picks. I know it's like an easy take to say. It's everyone said it before, like, oh, they're ruining the draft. They are actually ruining the draft. And I hate how they have to use these stupid words. Like, they are I, putting their eyes on this person on the draft. They are focused on it's this so person dumb. in the draft. Just it's say, so dumb. Just say, like, stop. Just stop. Just say, yeah. hey, they're going to select this guy. Yeah, it is so dumb. And that, that does just ruin the fun. Like, I understand wanting to be an insider. But at this point, it feels like they've, they've built up their reputation. Everybody knows Shams and Woj. They get the scoop. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's great. Everybody gets it. What, why? Like, what's the point now? Just to, like, flex? I don't know. I, I, like, I genuinely don't get – I don't know. Like, because NFL, they're not allowed to do this. I'm just wondering what it accomplishes. Like, like what is actually the end goal of them tweeting this? Now, trades and stuff, breaking news, I understand. But for an event like this, where it's a live event, everybody's watching live, and, 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 you know, the argument is going to be turn off your phone. Yeah, well, what if I want to scroll on Twitter and see what people are talking also, about? people are going to text you anyway, so you can't really, like, 
to you shut it off. You can't be on your phone. You can't be on your phone at all. Yeah. If you don't want it to be spoiled, which is what I did tonight for the first 10 picks. Yeah, I turned my phone off from picks 12 to 16 because I just wanted to be surprised what happened with the Hornets. Oh, yeah. Me too. Check my I phone. Checked. I have 50 notifications. I checked after the 10th pick, and then I was like, all right, I'm done through the lottery, so we'll see what happens. And I mean, we can talk about it in a little bit, but just disappointment a little bit. I, I am happy with the Mark Williams pick. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Let's start right. off. Uh, and one more thing. When they say these trade packages, they need to say that what is in the trade. Instead of it's, like, hmm. they know what's in the trade. They, I know they want 100% no. Just say what's in the trade right then and there. 100%. They should be required to do that because they're not going to make the trade if the exact details aren't ironed out. So there's no reason for teams to withhold this information. It should be a rule, in my opinion. I don't understand why it's not or what the drawback is to that. But when it's announced, like everybody's just confused and speculating. Or the silliness of it, put, put someone putting on the wrong hat. Yeah, someone putting on the wrong hat. Like, they should know before – honestly, before Adam Silver walks out there, he should say, this pick has been traded to blah, blah so-and-so, whatever. This pick's been traded to Detroit, and now Detroit from Charlotte selects Jalen Duran, and he should have to put on the Pistons hat. All right, let's talk about it. Paolo goes one to the Magic. People are pretty surprised. Most people thought it was going to be Jabari Smith. Uh, I mean, you could literally have said anybody, and I wouldn't have said no to you. Um, this was my number one player in the draft, obviously, uh, when we talked to Stenko. If you haven't watched the interview, go watch it. It still holds up even after the draft. Uh, you can get our draft takes and everything on there. Great interview with him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I love Paolo. I, I thought he was the best player in this draft. He's the most pro-ready guy. He's going to win rookie of the year. He's going to be probably a minus 120 favorite to win rookie of the year right off the bat. He is the surest thing in the draft. Like I said on Stenko's podcast, or our podcast with Stenko, he's got the highest floor. Maybe not the highest ceiling in the draft. I would give that to probably Shet Holmgren. But definitely the highest floor by far. The most NBA-ready game. And that was the safe pick for the Magic. And I think that's what they had to do. Because if you swing for the fences on Chet and miss, you're once again the laughing stock in the NBA. At least with Paulo, you're getting a surefire 20 points per game. Like you said, rookie of the year, almost lock, I would say. Barring some unforeseen circumstance, he, you know, he played 80 games. He's going to win rookie of the year. Exactly. And that's what Orlando needed. Orlando needed a guy who said, Hey, I'm going to give you the ball. Get me a bucket. They don't, they can't, they can't afford right now to have the chat unicorn thing where they need years to develop, but you know, who can is OKC. OKC yep. took the guys that they they're going to need time to develop like Jang, like uh Shea Gilge or not Shea Gilge, excuse me, Jang, Chet, and, uh, and even Jalen Williams needs to develop too. I, and uh, we'll get into OKC. I love what they did, but, yeah, I think Paolo was the easy pick at one. I, I I didn't think it was much of a question in my mind. Obviously, you know, you can say the unic- you can say the potential of Chet, Jabari Smith, unbelievable shooting, but I absolutely love what the Magic did. It makes all the sense in the world. It makes too much sense, especially I think a lot more people are going to wake up tomorrow morning and just be like, oh, wait, this actually makes sense. Yeah, like, and it'll be interesting for the Magic to see how Paolo messes with, you know, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs. That's an interesting lineup. I'm not really sure how that'll be. Not the best defensive lineup at first glance. Wendell Carter helps. Wendell Carter's phenomenal defensively. Wendell Carter does help. But then again, he Wendell Carter played a lot of power forward last year for the Magic. He started almost every game of power forward when he played. He's going to play a lot of five. You think, so you think that'll work? Wendell Carter at the five and Paolo at the four, do you think that's enough? It's a little undersized. I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to the playoffs. I think it'll be – I think they'll be in a lot of games. I, I, if you told me yeah. that Magic made the play-in next year, I wouldn't say no. I might say no. Ten? Ten seed? I'm not saying win the play. I'm saying get yeah. in. Still, I, I mean, there, really? there's, some team, there's some teams in the East that I think will be above them. Hawks will be back. Hornets. I don't will know. the Hornets? Will the Hornets? I mean, I, I, I sure hope they'll be at least be in the play-in. Pay, I, don't I, don't think the, I don't think the Knicks are ahead of them. I don't think no, the Pacers pay, are ahead of Pacers them. Pacers probably not. Raptors are now, though. We didn't have them there last year. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if, if, the, if, if, if the Nets blow up, the Nets aren't going to be there. Ben Simmons is the best player. He's not leading that team to the playing tournament. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We'll get into that at the very end of this after we talk about the draft. But, yeah, no. Paolo goes one. Check goes two. Uh, check going two. It, I mean, it just seems like it fit. Like, OKC makes – it just made all the sense of the world. Uh, yeah. Once you saw Paolo go one, I, it never really felt like Jabari Smith was ever going to go to OKC. It was it either like, Chet or Paolo. Yeah, whoever didn't – well, even then, I still feel like whoever didn't go one between Paolo and Jabari was going three. That's how it always felt. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And with the Chet pick, though, the Thunder, it just seems like they're just making a my team lineup off NBA 2K. <laughs> Demi God, Chet Holmgren, Demi God, Usman Jang, 
Like, it just seems like they're building a little – they got Pokasheski over there, the 7-1, what, small forward who brings the ball to the court. That summer league team is going to be ridiculous to watch. The I'm Thunder excited for the summer league today. this year. I am too. I think it'll be fun. That first, like, two, three days of summer league is going to be awesome, and then you're going to, like, realize sports aren't back for another two months. Yes, yeah, it's like a little, like, taste. You're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so ready for the season. And then they get to that last day when none of, like, the good players play in the summer league, and you're like, back to misery. Yep, Exactly. Um, yeah, check goes to, I mean, look, everyone said, everyone said the same things a million times. You never know. He's the, un, he's the biggest question mark in the draft. Biggest wild yep. card has the biggest upside, uh, probably lowest floor, highest ceiling guy in the top three, obviously yep. out of the top three. Yep. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously I don't, there's not a lot of picks in this draft. That I like truly hated. Um, I mean, like you had to go Chet there. I think is the right pick. I don't think you I go agree. Jabari there. No, I agree. It's, it's what the Thunder needed. They got shy. They got Lou Dor. They got Josh Giddy. Yeah, I think I think a center is what they needed. They can't they can't continually start Isaiah Roby or Derek Favors even or Mike Muscala. That can't be the answer at the five. Um, and then Houston takes Jabari Smith at three. He looked pissed. I mean, you mentioned it. He looked pissed. I don't think he was. I don't think he was pissed that he got drafted by the Rockets necessarily. It's not like oh, I don't want to play for the Rockets. No, it's just probably three. Pissed. He was told he was going to be number one, I guarantee it. And the Magic got mm-hmm. cold feet at the last second and changed it. Because like I said, even Paulo looked surprised a little bit to go number one. It's like the – I guarantee the Magic were like all over Jabari Smith and then last second were like, what are we doing? Yeah, it's – uh, I think it'll be fine. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I know we should – like, we're doing a show, so we should probably be like, oh, he sucked. He's going to be awful. Oh, he's going to be the best player in the NBA. Ah, yeah. I don't have that. I don't. I don't have a strong feel for Jabari Smith. I don't like. He reminds me like a like. If you want to like a good comp for him, like like a positive comp, I would say he's like Jalen Brown with a better jump shot. Yeah, I can see that. Is what I see. Like, play super hard. Uh, can't dribble the ball. Can't play make as much, but like, still more, is an unbelievable more height. talent. Yeah, a little more height, I and mean, yeah. you can shoot better than Jalen Brown. So, I think that's I, good. I, th- I think that's what it is. Um, also, third pick. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I don't. Houston's not going to do anything next year, but you know. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Houston, Houston's team is interesting to me because they're building a lot. They're building a team around a lot of guys who. I don't. I don't know how to describe it. It's like Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, you know, Kenyon Martin Jr., and now uh, Jabari Smith. These young, exciting guys. That ha- mm-hmm. you know, not that they should be winning yet, but it's almost hard for me to imagine that team meshing together to win. You know, like they're like, oh, this young core is so exciting, but it's hard for me to see that, that young core translating to wins. I don't know. It could. It's obviously really early, but yeah. I uh, let's move on. Top four. The top three was a lock about who was going in the top three. Top four is when it gets interesting. The Kings at four. Uh, there's a lot of rumors this week that it was going to get traded. And uh, at like once you saw the Kings were on the clock, you're like, oh crap, they actually have to like pick someone here. Yeah. And then Woj comes up is that they're focusing. They're yeah. They're they have a crush on Keegan Murray. Um, yeah. Th- this is the first pick I didn't like. I agree. I think um, this is the first pick that could potentially be a bust. Yes. And I was we talked about it with Stanko, and I mentioned this before. When you're a team that's not good, you can't draft based off need. You have to draft best player available. Like yep. you, you just have to. Why? Like, it does not make any sense. And Jaden Ivy, even if you just draft Dr- Jaden Ivy, let's say he has a good summer league or something. Like, eventually he's a trade piece. Yeah. Or I mean, Darren Fox could be a trade piece if you like Jaden Ivy that much. And it just seems like the Kings just don't know what they're doing in that regard. After the whole Halliburton situation, that left a bad taste in my mouth. And now this situation, not drafting the best available, in my opinion, because even Stenko is like huge on Jaden Ivy. You know, Keegan Murray, yeah, that might work out. But like you said, it's almost like they drafted based on need. And when you have the fourth pick and you're, you know, a team struggling to, yeah, be not the last place in the conference, you're always last place, you can't do that. No, I don't like the pick at all. But five, Jaden Ivey goes to Detroit. Absolutely love what Detroit did in this draft. They are murdering this draft. They fleeced, they fleeced the Hornets. Yeah. I'll say it. They fleeced the Hornets. They're buying out Kimball Walker. So they're getting that salary off the books. Got Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey, and all they had to give up was a future first. Yeah, that they got for Jeremy Grant to get him off the books. Exactly. Yeah, so, they, yeah, great move. I can't believe it. The Pistons are killing it. And watch them sign Miles Bridges. Oh, they're going to give him the max and put us in an awful spot. Horrible spot. They're going to fleece us twice this summer. And uh, 
I mean, like you think about it, Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, that backcourt could be unbelievable. I mean, that's yeah. a backcourt you could be talking about for years. I, if you're a Detroit fan, you're walking away from this trap like, holy crap, we're back. They're yeah. going to be an all-time league pass team. They're the front runner for the number one league pass team this year. The, that backcourt of Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey doesn't lack size, doesn't lack defense. Jaden Ivey's bringing it. Yep. Playmaking, shooting, attacking the basket. It, you know, if they mesh together, Sadiq Bay coming off the hot streak in the year last year, like they have, they have a good, they have a good little roster over there. Jalen Duran, obviously, Project Center. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, I let's, move, let's move on. We're not going to do like an hour and a half on this draft. Yeah. Uh, let's Anything go is- on. Uh, Benedict, Mathurin, Benedict Mathurin to the Pacers seems pretty obvious when you realize Jaden Ivey was going to Detroit. Uh, yeah. I don't know about Mathurin. A lot of people are very confident on him. I don't have a strong opinion on him necessarily. Another guy I don't have a strong opinion on is Shaden Sharp. Yep. I will say this, though. Uh, him going to the Blazers seems like a good fit and no pressure. There's no pressure for him. In, There's no in pressure. Portland. But the Blazers are, have been weird lately this offseason. They've been getting these weird guys like Ananobi and – oh, who was the other one that we just talked – no, oh, Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant, yeah. They're, like, they're getting these good players that are, like, great pieces that have been on winning teams before. Like, they're great pieces that have been playoff experience. That's not going to take the Blazers anywhere, I don't think. They don't have – like, if the Blazers had a second star and then they got these guys, okay – but it just feels like they're kind of putting a Band-Aid on like a bullet hole almost. Like they're, they're, it's a temporary fix. Like, yeah, they might win 41 games next year and go 500. But what's that really going to do? It's not going to make Damian Lillard want to stick around. Well, I, that's, that comes into my conspiracy theory, and people will trash me for this probably. But I think the, I think the conspira- NBA conspiracy theory that's so true is that Damian Lillard is scared to leave Portland because he's scared he won't actually win the ring. And he doesn't face real criticism when he's in Portland. He just doesn't. No. He can say, oh, this is the front office's fault. It's not my fault. You know, I uh, – I, and you know who's the next candidate for that is Bradley Beal. Yeah, 100%. And the Damian Lord take is spot on because it's almost like, yeah, people will feel sympathetic for him because they'll be like, the best help he ever had was C.J. McCollum. Like, they never – And look what C.J. doing around. in New Orleans. Yeah, like, you can't say it was no help. The Blazers made the conference finals – like, he took that team far. If you're Damian Lillard, you know, you can kind of got to bet on yourself here. And I'm not saying force your way out, but if Portland doesn't do anything, you got to, you got you know, don't just waste your career away in Portland, which it feels no. like he's trying to do. Um, But, yeah, Shaden Sharp, I mean, there are just nobody has any idea about him. That's the craziest yeah. thing. There's, there's just nothing on him. Uh, and then the Pelicans go eight, Dyson Daniels. Uh, I mean – I thought they were. I thought this was going to be AJ Griffin, actually. Yeah, and he, he I, slipped a long way. Yeah, I just thought they would need a spot up three point shooter, and they went defense right here. So and they've I already guess. got like Herb Jones, and I don't know. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I mean they're in a good spot though. If you're a New Orleans fan, like they're you're in a good spot. Dyson yeah. Daniels doesn't really do it for me. I watched a lot of his tape, and I just I didn't see it. But again, he's yeah. a defender. So when you say speaking of defenders, Jeremy Sohan. Our most controversial pick. He goes nine to the Spurs. It feels a little Josh primo It does. It feels like they're doing the same thing. What happened to the Spurs? Now, you know, now we're going to be eating our words with Josh Primo and Jeremy Sohan or the next dynamic duo and, you know, make the Western Conference final. You know what? Years in a row. Yeah, I'm fine saying. I'm fine not being okay with the pick. I, I don't think. And I, this isn't even – put the, put all the bias aside, the Carolina-Baylor bias aside. Even just watching that – game or just watching a few like some of his tape during the year i just didn't see it not enough of a sample size wasn't as involved as he should have been on offense i don't know if this is based on potential like i know you can't have too many three and d wings or you know whatever it may be like you guys i just didn't i don't see it well the big thing i you do notice when with him is like whenever you watch a baylor game he does impact the game in ways that don't show up on the stat sheet like his defense the way he moves off the ball his cutting his screens all that yeah. And that's, I think that's useful for a team in like a, a great position. Like, like we mentioned before, like a golden state, um, even like a Miami, uh, like a, a real contender, but someone like yeah. San Antonio, who's competing in the play-in, I don't think it does that much for them. They need scoring. I thought Johnny I Davis was going to go here. Yeah. I think that would have made the most sense, especially if they're going to trade DeJounte Murray, like everybody's saying, if they trade DeJounte Murray, I mean, is Josh Primo going to be their starting point guard of the future? Derek White's gone. It's either him or Lonnie Walker. Which or I, Trey Jones. Yeah, or Trey Jones, which none of those guys do for me. Sorry, but 
Trey Jones does it for me. <sighs> well, no, I don't know. I, I don't like the pick. I don't like what the Spurs have been doing. I mean, maybe they have a plan, but it just seems like they're one of those franchises that is just kind of floundering. Yeah, I, I didn't like the pick. Nine seemed early, but, you yeah. know, uh, whatever. I mean, he impacts the game. A lot of people were high on him. We'll see. I mean, obviously what we say right now, like, we'll have a couple, like, quote-unquote hot takes, but, like, yep. nah, I'm not, like, I, I've j- you just seen the draft. You've been burned before because I thought Justice Winslow was going to be the next best thing. Turns out him and Frank Kaminsky had very similar careers. I don't Frank Kaminsky. I should have put him on that jersey tonight. My, yeah, you should have. And my goodness, the 2016 Hornets, the 2017 Hornets are so back. Rich Cho. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that. We're almost there. Johnny Davis goes 10. I like the pick for the Wizards. Uh, 11, the trade. Usman Jang gets drafted by the Knicks, traded to the Thunder. They got like three first round picks. Another uh, unicorn. Another unicorn guy, honestly. Yeah. And I loved, I loved his tape. When we, were, when we were getting ready for the interview with Stanko, watch a lot of tape, watch a lot of Usman Jang. I mean, amazing on the pick and roll. He is phenomenal with the pick and roll, and so is Chet. They're they're going to do some so much fun stuff. Him, Josh Giddy, they're going to be so fun to watch. It's literally going to be a European basketball team. Yep, one hundred percent. I was about to say that. And imagine if Chet and uh, Jane can learn to play together. Oh my gosh! Like just just think about those games when it's the Raptors versus the Thunder, just polar opposites, hard defense, like. Yeah, <laughs> just grit and grind, and then they're going against the Thunder when it's just all soft, cutting, passing, shooting. Yep. The, th- the Thunder are doing great things. You know, everybody rips on Sam Presti for acquiring all these future draft picks and assets. I think this draft really paid off. But the Knicks got three first round picks, conditional, which they'll eventually get them. But they'll eventually get a, them. But those are still fan- three first round picks because we'll get into three first round picks. Because, all right, real quick. Thunder get Jalen Williams. All right, pick whatever. I think he's Zaire Williams and just the same thing. Uh, but let's, let's get into the Hornets. I can't, I can't hold it any longer. 13. So I shut off my phone. Let's paint a picture here. I shut off my phone. I'm like, yeah. all right, I don't want to see what's going on. I don't want to know. I just, I just, I'm just going to watch it. I, I like watching the draft without knowing. So I had to flip the ABC. You can't be on ESPN because Woj spoils nope. everything. Nope. So I was like, okay, all right, let's go on ESPN. And they go, Jalen Duran. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I he that's not who I wanted. He fell in love. Yeah, and it's not who I wanted. I think he, I, 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 I'm not high on him. I think he's Kai Jones. I, he mm. didn't make a big impact in, in Memphis. I like Mark Williams way more, especially defensively, and that's what we need. But anyhow, anyhow, that's not the point. If we draft Jalen Duran, and then all of a sudden my phone blows up, I hear trade, 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 trade. And then we trade Jalen Duran to the Pistons for what what we thought was going to be a Milwaukee 2025 first round pick. Now it is a 2023 Denver first round pick, uh, which basically is the same thing. And then four second round picks, which are basically like, hey, the, the, the equivalent to this trade is like you have RB2 in fantasy football. Let's say, let me think of an RB2. Let's say you have Ezekiel Elliott and someone's like, hey, man, I'll give you let me give you a, a flex option. You get like oh, a look, guy who's a second flex and then look, four waiver wire, dude. You get like a defense, a kicker, um, so just and just bums Alan, on the waiver. Alan Lazard or Marquez Valdez yep. Scantling yep. and, yep. and J.K. Dobbins. That, yep. There's your trade. There's your trade right there, and for Zeke. Yep. And you only and you only have so many. You know, you only have so many roster spots in fantasy football. You only have so many roster spots in the NBA. Like, what are they trying to do? Amp up the Greensboro Swarm? Like with these second round picks. Yeah, Devontae Graham was a great second round pick. Yeah, Cody Martin's developed nicely in a second round pick. Yeah, JT Thor is going to be okay the second round pick. Why the, why the hell do we need four second round picks while we're picking in the lottery? If we're going to trade like the 25th pick for this for this exchange, then okay, I get it. But a lottery pick? The Knicks got three first round picks back. Uh, it it yeah. makes no sense. It, it really and we were just two sense. spots behind. Um, it's a disaster right now in Charlotte. It's 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 literal disaster. There's no always head coach. Something. Yep, we talked about it before. It's always something like we can't actually have the nice thing in Charlotte sports. We can never have it like, oh, it was cool the Panthers went fifteen and one. Let's get, oh, it's cool we made the Super, but you don't actually get the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, it's cool you have Lamella, but you'll actually not win any basketball games. You'll just make the fake playoffs. Yeah. And now it's and then like just tonight too. It's like oh, you get two, you get all, 
all these picks, but it's it's just nothing. It means nothing. Jalen Duran was so high on a lot of people's boards, even above Mark Williams. Everybody thought he'd be gone. I also was not completely sold on Jalen Duran, but then it happens, and you know, I watch him. I'm okay with it. You know, it was a good pick. Kevin Mark Williams is fine, and then he I gets mean, traded. He looks, I, he looks like Will Chamberlain on a YouTube highlight next day. Yeah, well, then he gets traded, and then we get this haul back that you know means nothing to me. It's just always an asterisk. Lately, there's always an asterisk over anything Hornets related. Hornets got a great new young head coach. You know, it's had or not young, but great head coach had playoff experience, just won a championship. Oh, asterisk. He's actually not coming. Hornets draft a great young center, like really fell to them at 13, you know, way later, lasted way longer than expected. Oh, wait a second. They're trading him to Detroit for nothing. Like, are they, were they just helping Kimba out? Did Charlotte management just love Kimba? And they were like, you know what? Let's do this just to help him out and get him out of there and get him a buyout in Detroit. Is that what it is? You think they have like loyalty ties to Kimba and they just like screwed themselves for him? And then the Steve Clifford rumor comes out today that he's interested in coming back to Charlotte. Let's just get Al Jefferson out of retirement. Get Josh McRoberts in here. Let's just get the band back together. <laughs> I mean, unreal. Uh, and then we're at 13. Obviously the Cavs were not going to take a center. So nope. you could have just said, okay, hey, we're going to take A.J. Griffin here. We need th- we need consistent spot-up three-point shooting. Our Probably our most consistent spot-up three-point shooter – is either Miles Bridges or PJ Washington. Yep. Oh yeah. Which we, we could have desperately used that. And then so hey, we get AJ Griffin. The Cavs were gonna pick up Ogbaji no matter what. They weren't yep. gonna pick Duran or Williams. And then we have our pick at 15 between Williams and Duran. And obviously the Hornets loved Williams because they wouldn't have traded uh Duran, but I would have had a- AJ Griffin, Mark Williams would have been a, a, an extremely successful draft. I would have been fine with A.J. Griffin. I would have been fine with Ogbaji even. And I would have also been fine with trading Jalen Duran if it meant we got, oh, I don't know, two picks in this draft in the, second, in the first round. Like, let's say we got like 20 and 25 or something like that. You know, The only, the only way to see it saved if it's like a couple days later, there's a trade that comes out like, hey, Charlotte's sending Gordon Hayward and that 2023 Denver first round pick to, I don't know, yeah. let's say Phoenix. That would be great. And we get De- DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, if there's a plan in place, then I'll eat my words and say, okay, I'll trust you, Mitch Kupchak, which we've trusted him before but and he's come through. Knee-jerk reaction. It looks horrible. It does. If, if this is it, if this is truly it, I don't get it. I really don't get it. You know, the Hornets aren't in rebuild mode. Not at all. No. So why are they stacking second-round picks? Makes zero sense to me. I don't there know. there I mean, has to be something going on. Otherwise, it's terrible. Otherwise, it's of- nothing short of terrible. All that aside, I like the pick at 15. I like Mark Williams. Even as a Carolina guy, I think Mark Williams is exactly what the Hornets needed. Lob threat, defensive presence. Can he switch? Eh, maybe we'll play more drop coverage. You know, I mean. And and it was the worst kept secret in the league. Everyone knew Mark Williams was going to Charlotte at 13 or 15. Yeah, it it made too much sense. And honestly, I'll be very intrigued to see how Kai Jones progresses this summer and how they stack up against each other. Kai Jones having one more year of experience. Still, I think will be a little raw, and I even think Mark Williams will be able to contribute before Kai Jones. But then again, we thought Kai Jones would play a little bit when he got drafted last year, and he didn't touch the floor. So yeah, uh, I mean, I think the year in Greensboro will definitely help. But yeah, Do you think Mark I mean, Williams Mark... plays for the Swarm a lot. Yeah, like a lot, a lot, or like Kai no, Jones I don't, I don't think he play. I don't think he'll play as much as Kai Jones. Kai Jones played like twenty games with the Swarm, right? And he, I don't, think... he didn't play much with the Hornets at all. Yeah, I, I think Mark Williams will be a, with the Hornets a lot more. Um, okay. It's just defense, man. Yeah, I agree. Woj just tweeted out, the Thunder's four picks in this top 34 of tonight's draft. Chet Holmgren, Usman Jang, Jalen Williams, and Jalen Williams from Arkansas. No, that's funny. <laughs> um, Cue the memes. I mean, that's a great draft. If you're a Thunder that is fan, a great like, draft. Is great. Awesome. Okay, uh, Hornets. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can move on. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to talk about them anymore. No, Lakers we'll see are on the clock. Out. Maybe there's a plan. Lakers are on the clock, but uh, yeah, Hornets take Mark Williams, whatever. Uh, Atlanta continues to pick Duke guys, Duke wingmen. Uh, yep. AJ Griffin goes there. Um, my guy Tari Eason, LSU been, goes to the Rockets. I would have been very okay. With I would have been fine with that. I yep. knew he was going to be available there, so that seemed realistic. I did not think A.J. Griffin would fall to 16. Yep. Um, Dallin Terry. Should, I mean, fine, yeah, Dallin Terry. Jake Laravia at 19. That's the one we got to talk about. Jake yeah. Laravia at 19 shocked me. 
because I was I I stopped uh, I stopped watching the draft for a minute. I was just sitting there on my phone. Refresh Twitter two seconds ago. Woj tweets out Jake Laravi at nineteen. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, is this? This is a fake tweet. Is this a fake Woj account? Yeah. This is a Barry McCockner. Is this a Wake Burner? Wake Forest Burner account? <laughs> no. But literally, what, like two weeks ago, he was projected a mid-second rounder. I guess he had an outstanding combine or something because he was rising up. You know, I saw late 20s earlier this week in some of the mock drafts. But 19, it feels very Cam Johnson-esque. How Cam Johnson shot up to 11 a couple of years ago when, when nobody thought that would happen. Yeah, because I saw Luravia anywhere from like 45 to 28. Yeah. Yeah. I saw like maybe like the last few picks of the first round is like a, like a ceiling. Um, Walker Kessler gets drafted. Good for him. The Timberwolves. Um, yeah. Good for him. They need David defense. Roddy. Yeah. David Roddy, weird pick. That was a weird pick. Uh, did you see Jay Billis? Uh uh-uh. uh. What? No. Uh-uh. Wait, hold up. Lakers select Max Christie, Michigan State. Mm. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> Love it. Super team LeBron's just you know. Warriors stunned. Yeah, no, I I don't know who's going to stop the Lakers next year. Now, um, Blake Wesley, twenty five. I like to pick. Uh, yeah. Wendell Moore goes to Houston, or no, sorry, he goes to Minnesota. He got traded to Houston and then to Minnesota. These trades are these trades are out of control. They, they, it's, yeah. it's, it feels it's like out, the same you can't team. keep up with them. When you look at a trade, are Minnesota and Memphis not the same team? Whenever you're like, oh, they just got yes. to wait, wait, yes. which, which team is this? And they trade with each other, and you're like, oh, my God, like, what's going on? The, the NBA draft has got to fix this. It's such an easy fix. Just freaking, like, announce the trades. Just the teams, announce them. The teams know the exact terms when they make them. They should be required to hand them to Commissioner Silver before he walks out on that stage because they know the terms when they make the trade. And we got to – I mean, like, for my dumb sports brain, I need a graphic on TV saying, this guy is here, this guy is there, this pick is there. Because I can't think about it when I'm getting 15 tweets from Woj. It's just like, hey, he's going to the Rockets. Then yeah. he got traded to the Timberwolves. But then they're sending cash for the second-round protection to him. And it's just like, dude, just tell me where he's going, please. I'm tired of this. And also, how awkward is it for them to go do that interview with yeah. Monica McGill and they're like, man, I'm so happy to be a Dallas Maverick, man. And then you're like, no, you're a Timberwolves. Actually, and they're like, <laughs> word is you've been traded to the Detroit Pistons. And then they're like, oh, well, I'm just happy to start my career. I, like, I, I played with Matt Stafford on the Lions in Madden. Uh, I love <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> it's just they put on the wrong hat. They go through the whole charade, get their picture taken with the wrong hat. Like, it's just like, little things like this, that. Stop this. It could be fixed. Stupid crap, man. It could be fixed. Yeah, so we got, what, Bochan, Blake Wesley, good pick. Wendell Moore, Duke, four for First round picks, good for them. Nicola, yeah, we're at, heat. we're at 36 right now. I don't know who is actually picking anymore. It's a literal nightmare trying to figure it's, out who's it, actually picking. Is it the it's Pistons? At that point. It's at that point right now. It's uh, Portland. But is it to the Pistons, proposed trade to the Pistons? Oh, I have no idea. This is such a nightmare. Um, we, can, we can close out the first round at least. Warriors, Patrick Baldwin at 28. I do want to say on our podcast with Stinko, I listed Patrick Baldwin as one of my sleepers. He was a huge recruit coming out of high school. Followed his dad to a small school in Milwaukee. I know. He was he was Duke-bound, and then he was like, no, I'm going to go play with my dad. I think this feels very Kuminga Moses Moody-esque for the Warriors. He can be part of that new – whenever Steph, Clay, and Dre decide to hang it up, he can be part of that new little core. Shout out my guy, Kevin Dana. Does uh, He does play-by-play for the Santa Cruz Warriors. Um, you're going to see a lot of Patrick Baldwin next year, and it's going to be fun. I think he's going to be a stud. Then you got Tata Washington fell all the way to 29, and then Peyton Watson, UCLA, rounding up the first round. Um, little Like we said earlier, a little anticlimactic. Yeah, I was going to say, as an oh, so like we're not grading the draft teams. We'll talk about who we want. We'll take a break here in a second. Um, but real quick, overall, from one to 10, what do you give this draft? Like, as just as, as entertainment? I would I'm giving, say this. You go know what? No, you got it. You, you go ahead. All right. I was going to say, I'm comparing it to these past drafts. I would say a seven and a half to an eight this year. That's high. Maybe, okay, maybe a seven. But the thing is, well, I'm comparing it to other drafts, which have been. I'm going 5.1. Really? Compared to other drafts? What other drafts has been as eventful as this one? I mean, I felt, I felt last, the last two years were way, way more eventful. So, obviously, for a Hornets fan, two years ago, we got LaMelo. That was eventful. That was but, awesome. But just overall trade-wise and stuff, I don't know. Eh. 
Yeah, I, it, it didn't do it for me tonight. Uh, every like NFL snob tonight, is, it's a win for them because they're like, oh, this was boring. Like, yeah. All right. The thing is, it is. And when it gets to the second round, nobody cares. No, it, it was brutal. And also, if you're on the East Coast time like you are, like it's 1130, oh, yeah. dude. I can't sit here and be like, when is Trevor Keels going to get picked? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, oh, I want to see Brady Manning get picked, even though he's not. But, you know, I'm going to sleep after this. So <laughs> he's, he's going to be he's going to be great. Like day five in summer league. He will put up 30 <laughs> points on one of those last summer league games. Okay, well, let's, take a, let, let's, let's take a quick break, and then uh, All right. we'll do some draft grades and then talk about the KD Kyrie thing. From the famous Barry McCochran on Twitter. Friend of the uh, program. Controversial, controversial person on Twitter. Uh, he said, player gets picked 57th overall, ESPN analyst. So he's basically like a combination of Jordan, LeBron, and Steph, but only better. He could – Definitely be a problem in about three to four years. It's so spot on. It's they, spot I mean, on. There, I literally just saw them put up a graphic of someone drafted in the second round. They're like, he is easily probably going to be Buddy Healed. Hey, like, no, he's not. He's going to be playing for the Grand Rapids Gold. Any graphic the ESPN puts up is spot on and accurate. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> no, and, but. Go ahead. I, I mean, I'm watching. I'm just watching the Agua Caliente Clippers get drafted right now. <laughs> the, the analyst thing is spot on, but then again, you got to think about it. Who's going to get excited if you're like, man, this guy really reminds me of a, <laughs> of a fucking of an Alperin Sangoon or something like yeah. that? Not even that. If someone's just like, yeah, you know, this point guard drafted here at 53, he really gives me uh, quite similar vibes to Jeremy Pargo. Uh, I mean, similar play style. <laughs> he could easily amount to a Cody Martin role in the NBA. <laughs> it's like Kenneth Lofton Jr. gets drafted. They're like Samuel Dallenbear is definitely his player comp. I mean, I definitely see this leading the league in rebounds. Like, who gets um, excited for that? I don't know. I got excited when Vernon Carey got drafted, so maybe I I'm think, the sucker. Yeah. I think that'd be hilarious if they did do, like, more realistic player comps, and they're, like, <laughs> just naming off all these, like, lower-tier <laughs> players, and they're like, man, like, this guy His, really reminds me. <laughs> Go ahead. This guy's peak is DJ Augustine. I'll tell you, yeah. he might win you a game one in the playoffs. <laughs> I'm getting real Stanley Johnson vibes out of this pick right here. <laughs> He's like, he'll, he'll, he'll stay around in the league for about five years. Oh, man. I just want them to just be like, yeah. I, I just want to see one pick where they're honest. They're just like, dude, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, there's like, I mean, I don't get the reasoning behind this. Like that would be so much more entertaining. They should come out with like a, you know, they like the Manning if, broadcasts. For the NFL. If, Ken, if Kendrick Perkins just gets up there and go, and they're just like, and uh, they're just like Nikola Sabatich, and they're, and he's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It was kind of funny though. I don't know if you were on ABC at this point, but whenever uh, the Knicks drafted uh, Jang. Stephen A. and Spike Lee were like, man, I never heard of this kid in my life. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> they were so yeah, I saw, I saw that with Stephen uh, A. That was Stephen pretty a. funny. Um, Khalifa Jop. Um, so the next 30 minutes of this podcast, we're going to talk about Khalifa Jop and how he's going to be the difference in the Cavs' future. Um, <laughs> Potentially I, I, spots in Europe for him when he, when he without a doubt, <laughs> exits the league in five years. Or if he's just like, yeah, they don't have – or those weird picks were like, yeah, so they don't have his draft rights until 2032. It's like when, uh, whenever you see a tweet, it's like, hey, BYU and Missouri have a game scheduled in 2032, and you're like, yeah. sick. I'm booking like all, my spirit flight tonight. It's like all these Eurostash guys come over like 10 years later, and everybody's like, oh, remember this guy from 2015 draft? Like, he's making his debut tonight, plays three minutes, never yep. sees the NBA floor again. Yep. Yep. Um. All right, well, enough of that. Uh, draft grades real quick. Who's the, who came out the best in the draft? Who came out the worst? Just eyeballing it, knee-jerk reaction. I got two teams top of my list that came out great, and it's the OKC Thunder. It's the Detroit Pistons. We mentioned it before. Thunder, yep. Shet Holmgren, Zhang, both Jalen Williams. I think they stole the draft, honestly. And then from the Pistons' perspective, putting Jaden Ivey, getting Jaden Ivey at five and pairing him with Kate Cunningham, I think is a recipe for success. Also getting their number one big man on the board, Jalen Duran, without really giving up too much, if we're being honest. And, you know, yep. getting Kim, taking on that Kim Walker salary, having the flexibility to negotiate a buyout. They're coming out on top, honestly. So Detroit, OKC, my two winners from tonight, at least at first glance. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can argue that. Every draft blog, every per, every analyst coming on tomorrow, 
uh, talking about the draft, is going to say OKC Detroit absolutely killed it. Um, yep. You know, if we only had the 13th pick in this draft and we're like, yeah, we got Mark Williams, I would have been like, wow, what a great draft. Yep. Yep. Didn't, didn't mess it up. Pivotal we're not losers in this draft. We're not losers yeah. in this draft. Um, could have been winners. We're not either, but we could have been winners. Exactly. Um, so, knee jerk reaction, Pistons, OKC. I, you're you're crazy if you don't say that. I think um, I think uh, this is a small one and not like a major headline. Warriors getting Patrick Baldwin at 28. I'm telling you, don't sleep on it. I think he's really good talent. He was rated that high coming into college for a reason. You know, um, also last year. I also like a lot what the Rockets did. People are going to like like what they did. I mean, Jabari, if you break it down, I mean, Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, and Ty Ty Washington, I think that's a solid – I think that's yeah. – where they had their picks lined up, I don't think that's bad. Um, I think they I think they had their sights set on Palo. But How about Minnesota uh, getting three first-round picks out of it through trades? they got Kessler, Wendell Moore, and Ty Ty Washington. I think Ty Ty Washington fell really far. I'm not saying he should have been a lottery pick. But oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. I accidentally I, – I read that wrong. I said Ty Ty to the Rockets. Yeah, yeah. Ty Ty's only uh, – got traded to the Timberwolves. But Timberwolves coming out here with three first-round picks. I mean, that's a win, I think. I can't keep up with these trades. I'm just going to stop trying. It's uh, so loser, weird. It's so weird. Loser for me tonight. I, they're not a full-on loser, um, but they uh, they are a slight loser. I, I don't like Sohan. I don't yeah. like Sohan at nine. The Spurs – I. I, I don't get it again. I think they were losers two years in a row. We everybody and their mother hated the Josh Primo pick last year. Yeah. Um, and I don't like the Sohan pick this year. I just don't get it. Every draft analyst, though, it just says like he's gonna be the guy. And I just I just don't see it. I don't see it either. And also not necessarily a loser, but they could have been a bigger winner as the Sacramento Kings taking Keegan Murray at four. That's uh, I, I know it's tough. Lo- I think they're kind of a loser because the thing is, I like I, you draft. You say loser, and obviously you can't predict what these guys are going to be. Like you, you can't say Keegan Murray's going to be an all star. You can't say he's going to be a bust immediately. But gut reaction from a fan base, I don't think a Kings fan is excited about what happened tonight. I don't either. You can't be excited for Keegan Murray not when Jaden Ivey is still there. And it, the Kings are just weird with these picks because they had Halliburton, Davion Mitchell, like they have all these guards. And I know that's probably why they got cold feet with Jay Ivey and decided to, you know, draft based on need more so than anything. But then again, you know, at number four, like we said before, at number four, got to take best available. And shout out to our guy, Adam Senko, again. He had a tier list. He had four players in that top tier. It was the top three picks, and it was Jay Ivey. And so they went one, two, three, and five. So the Kings being in that middle pick, it almost feels like a Darko Milchich situation where it's like, oh, LeBron, Wade, Bosh, Melo, whatever, Darko Milchich. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know if this draft class will be that good, but yeah, I don't. No, not to that extent. That's a, yeah, like, that's a great comparison, though. Like that one uh, pick team in the middle that's like got screwed, and you're like, "What happened?" And there's four like notable players around them. EJ EJ Liddell to the Pelicans, I think. I, I think they he went to the Pelicans at least. I have no idea anymore. I'm giving up. <laughs> it's at that. I'm a broken that point. I'm just a broken man. I. I <laughs> When's the next I BYU pick? Oh. I don't think we have anybody in this draft. Uh, <laughs> Alex Barcelo is Alex Barcel is going to kill like day seven of the G League or the <laughs> Summer League. What, what, was the big, what, was the, what was the big man's name? Uh oh, Hornets. What? We got someone. Who? The Timberwolves are trading the number forty pick to the Charlotte Hornets. Hornets are targeting Bryce McGowns from Nebraska. Oh, okay. Greensboro Swarm legend. Why are we stacking second round picks? They fell in love with Cody Martin. We always talk about Borrego loving Cody Martin, and now I guess everybody else is on board. I guess I, I think I think it's just I think like uh, Jordan Cern Camp with the Greensboro Swarm head coach. He's like, I'm making the decision tonight for my team. <laughs> They're probably like, you know what? Screw it. Like we're about to do a huge Hayward trade. You take over for the second round. They're like, we are in a win now mode for our G League team. We want to win the G League title. Come That's next how, year. You got to teach a winning culture from the ground up. <laughs> uh, and okay. That's why we're going to send LaMelo down to the G League so we can learn how to win. Exactly. Uh, let's move on to the big news that came out earlier. Shan's yeah. talking about how Kyrie Irving now all of a sudden doesn't think he's going to opt in. And then he creates his fake list of like, I want to go to, okay, the top 17s plus let's add New York, New York in there. 
It seems yeah. like what I would do on a 2K my player. Like, oh, I want to trade. <laughs> send me to send me to one of the top seven teams in the league. And it's just crazy to me that the league has come to this, where it's like, not only can players demand a trade now, players can hold out and demand where they go, as long as both yeah. sides are on board. That is crazy to me. Like, I know it's a player-driven league now more than ever before, but the fact that you can literally like force your way to a team, like hold out your way to a certain team is insane to me. And Kyrie is just making news every offseason for some reason. On the court, no question about it, one of the top players in the league. But you just can't trust him to play. And that's why I'm sure the Nets don't want to give him a long-term deal. And I'm sure even some of these other teams who are, you know, in the mix for getting Kyrie are like, eh, like how much are we willing to give up? Yeah, I, I don't – if you're a team, you're like, why would I take on this guy? Yep. The only team it makes sense for is the Lakers. Yeah, if, why if, you not? Can, if you can get off Russell Westbrook or somehow, I mean, I don't think it works salary wise. Because even player. like, even like as much as they mortgage their future with all the first round picks, if you do get Kyrie Irving at this point, like, you just got to do it. Like, yeah, you're already screwed. Just go all in then. It doesn't seem like they're going to win a title, even with the healthy AD, not going to win a title with Westbrook at the helm. It doesn't seem like. So if you do have a chance to get Kyrie, I think you got to go. Because otherwise, LeBron, you know, he's eligible to sign an extension later this year. Who knows? Like, you know, he could go back home to Cleveland for one year. He could wait till Bronny gets in the league and then leave L.A. You know, yeah, like, or just like, hey, I'm going to go to the Knicks and just, like, yeah. be the guy. Then screw it. I'm going to go sign with the Warriors for the MLE. And then, yeah. oh, my God. I would pay so much money for that to happen just so we could talk to Sam. Oh, my or God. Just, all the Bron sexuals out there would, like, their head would explode. They were like, Oh my gosh, what can I do? Like, oh I can't God, say Le- anything anymore. LeBron joined Steph on a stacked Warriors team. I would, I would pay so much money. Yeah, ruin <laughs> the league. That'd be, that would, that would like reset the cycle of NBA. We'd have to like back to the 40s. The like, craziest, that would, like, that'd be the end. The craziest thing that comes, to, comes out of this is that, oh, let's go. Trevor Keels to the Knicks. Savior. All five Duke guys got drafted. Let's go. Um, nice. The, cra- the craziest thing about this is that Kevin Durant, Ryan Rosillo tweeted it out that he hitched his wagon to the dumbest superstar in the NBA. Yeah, he did. For him to leave Golden State like to that. To the like two dumbest superstars, to James Harden and Kyrie Irving, the only other person you could have thrown in there is Russell Westbrook. Who he's already been with. But the thing is with KD, I understand wanting to leave Golden State, lead your own team. You know, like that was always going to be Steph's team, even though KD was arguably the best player. I get it. Like, Going off, they said something on first take the other day when I was working it that was like, oh, yeah, like Kevin Durant drove the bus of the Warriors championship, but the car was registered, the bus was registered in Steph Curry's name all, always. Yep. That makes sense. So I get him wanting to leave, but he bargained on the wrong guy, 1 yeah. million percent. Now, nobody could have anticipated the pandemic or anything like that, but even without that, like you Kyrie could already, anti- but yeah, you Kyrie could already, already anticipate. Issues. Yeah, you yeah, could already, already anticipate this- Kyrie is going to do something stupid and then yeah. end up just screwing your organization. He, he does it everywhere he goes. And if you're a team, why would you give up so much, so many assets for him? I don't think the trade market is going to be as heavy as people think it will be. Maybe Kevin Durant made a deal with the devil and like mortgaged his entire future for those two chips with the Warriors. Maybe he like made a deal with the devil and was like, you know, just let me win these two. Like, I'll, yeah, whatever. And then that's it for the rest of my career. Cause I feel, I feel for him, honestly. Like people hate Durant, but like, Kind of sucks. He's playing some of the best basketball of his career. Doesn't have that much longer left in his prime. It doesn't feel like. And going yeah. out like this, I don't know. It is it's a rough situation. Also, the Nets are screwed. No, no assets moving forward. None. Ben Simmons. That's it. They have no assets. And the thing is, if Kyrie stays, they're a championship contender again. Joe Harris coming back. Ben Simmons will be yeah. healthy. Kyrie Durant. They have the pieces. If they haven't engaged Kyrie Irving, there's no doubt they're going to be a top. Top three favorite to come out. I easily top three out of the East, probably top five in the NBA to win the yep. win the league. Yeah, I agree completely. This news just shocks me just all around. It's like does it does it though? Does it shock me just because of what we see now in the NBA? But it's almost like they never even really gave it a chance. It seems yeah. like KD, Kyrie, obviously James Harden was only there for a brief moment. It seems like they never haven't really played together that much, and we haven't really seen what they're capable of. It's always like, oh, he's gonna return from injury just in time for this playoff series or He's going to sit out these next 20 games, and Durant's going to sit out the next 20 after that. And they only play 15 games together during the year. So we haven't even gotten a full season of the Brooklyn Nets since they signed all these guys, which, I don't know, sucks from a fan standpoint, but it is what it is, I guess. All right, well, let's close it there. That's all I got.
Fall guy. Power, power goes one. Right pick. Easy yeah, pick. I think so. Hornets. We're gonna find out in two weeks what they're actually doing. I hope. I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna see about a head coach. We're gonna see about a Gordon Hayward trade. Something's gotta happen. We'll hop back on here either overjoyed and like, oh, we knew he had a plan the whole time, or we're gonna be like, oh my god, Lamelo's gone in two years. This is a dumpster fire. Yeah, man. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the Hornets is going on. I, we'll find out if we have a head coach. Maybe like MJ will start coaching. Let's just <laughs> Lavar and MJ are the, the coaching staff. I don't know. <laughs> Weird night. Weird night. Uh, all right, awesome. Make sure to check out CarterCast.com. Don't forget to check out the Adam Stanko uh, interview we had earlier this week. It was an awesome episode. Loaded, loaded episode. We talk about the Warriors and everything, and we get into the NBA draft. Uh, I think our takes were pretty good in that interview, actually. I do, too. Looking back on it, I listened to most of it this morning on the way to work. Seems pretty spot on, honestly. He's probably going to be spot on about Jaden Ivey. I don't think he's going to be spot on about Jaden Ivey being the best player in this draft. Maybe not the best player, but in that top tier, though. Yeah, he. I think that, oh, man, Kings and Hornets, man, just it's it's rough. It's rough when you're mentioned in the same breath as the Kings. You, you it's it's rough. All right. Well, make sure to check out CarterCast.com. Check out the TikTok. We've been posting a bunch on there as well. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, we'll be back Tuesday. Uh, interviews coming soon, and we'll see y'all then. Bye.